All right, so what is a bandsaw? A bandsaw is a tool for cutting wood, uh, sheet plastic, sheet material. Uh, we have bandsaws for metal, but this one specifically is set up for wood. And this tool is used for cutting uh, curvy shapes, straight shapes. Uh, this is really one of the most versatile woodworking tools we have in the shop. Um, the way that the saw is used is by and large determined by the thickness of the blade. So if we raise this up, we can see the blade a little more clearly. This is a quarter inch wide blade. So this is for making tight curvy cuts. So this saw has got a blade, a bandsaw blade set up for making straight cuts. So imagine these are like cars. This is like turning a school bus. It makes big wide turns. This first blade we look at looked at is like a sports car. It makes tighter, curvier turns. This is a Laguna BX 14 bandsaw. This is one of the most common uh, bandsaws we have across the Sandbox School. All bandsaws are set up in essentially the same uh, principles. So we've got a band-shaped blade that is running on two wheels, one at the top and one at the bottom. This wheel holds the blade in tension, so it's pulling up on the blade. And this wheel has got the motor attached to it as well as the brake. This drives the blade. The blade is traveling down through the table, and this is actually one of the most forgiving saws to use in that it's not trying to eject the material away from the table. It's actually holding the material down as it travels through the table. You still need to make sure you have your hands securely on the material or push stick holding it down against the surface whenever you're working. When we're using the saw, we want to make sure that all the doors are shut. And we want to set our guard and guide appropriate for the thickness of the material we're cutting. Different blades serve different functions on band saws. We measure blades by both their uh, width, so this is a quarter inch blade, and we also measure them by the teeth per inch. So if I look between one and two inches, how many teeth can I count on this particular blade? This is a six TPI, or teeth per inch blade. This is a great uh, general purpose uh, woodworking blade that cuts relatively quickly. Um, it does not need, leave the finest, neatest, most precise cut, but it's quick and efficient, and it's a good all-around blade. If we look over here at this much larger saw blade, we can see that it is a blade that is one inch deep, and it's far fewer TPI, three. So this is an even coarser blade for even rougher cutting. It cuts even faster, and since it is quite uh, wide, it cuts best straight or in big arcs. So if you're cutting on the bandsaw, and the blade breaks on you, that's because you were turning or pushing the blade beyond its limits. So if you twist or turn too hard when making a cut, you can actually snap the weld or bend the weld in the blade uh, as it's cutting. So if the blade breaks, it will make a loud bang or pop sound. The blade will uh, stop cutting through your material. It will just sort of shake in place. Uh, if that happens, turn the saw off press the brake to stop the drive wheel and slow it down, and then uh, call for the help of a monitor or technician. As you can see, we have plenty of blades in the event that you break one. So talking a little bit more about the anatomy of the saw, this is called the fence. The fence locks and unlocks by turning this hand screw. The fence is set up in line with this measurement rail on the front of the saw. Uh, we checked this one earlier, so we know it is correct but if I were to take my tape measure and measure from the four inch line here, four inches here to the, this side of the blade. Um, be sure to double check that before you start using the tool as uh, tools can get uh, out of adjustment pretty easily depending on where they're being used in the shop. This is a pretty cool fence because we can change its orientation. If I wanna slide the fence in and get in a little tighter than I can, and I'm starting to bump into the uh, guide, I can actually loosen these two uh, thumb screws on the side. And don't take them all the way out, just loosen them. I can slide the fence out, lay it down, insert this slot into the key, and lock it back. Now I have the ability to bring that fence much tighter against the blade. So if I wanna make a straight cut, I would set my fence and I'd guide my material through the blade against the fence. If I wish to make a curvy or organic cut, I might remove the fence completely. 
So I'm going to demonstrate making a straight cut really quick. So whenever you're working with this bandsaw, it's important to set the height of our guard and guide appropriate for the material you, material you are using. So this uh, does two things. It both uh, reminds you and keeps your fingers and hands out of the way of the blade, but it also guides the blade as it travels through, through the opening in the saw, through the throat plate, and it keeps the blade straight and rigid, and it keeps it from flexing or twisting. So on many bandsaws, we have uh, a version of this. You'll notice that this one has a ceramic insert. Sometimes there will be little sparks. Um, that is simply the steel rubbing against the ceramic. That is okay on this particular type of uh, guide. If you use a plastic insert or a ball bearing guide, there should be no sparks. Um, if you get concerned about the number of sparks, talk to the technician and we will make sure that the saw is operating correctly. You'll notice that as I'm pushing the material through the blade, the blade deflects back and rubs the back of the blade against that little insert. Again, that just supports the blade, keeps it moving straight, and it keeps it so that your uh, cuts are on track and accurate as you work. When I'm setting, use, setting up to use this saw, um, I want to set my guard and guide at the appropriate height for this material. So I'm going to unlock the lock, which is right here. I'm going to crank the guard down and I want to be between a half an inch and an inch above my material um, to safely make a cut. Once I get it set I'm gonna lock back down and now I'm ready to cut. If you start cranking on this handle to make an adjustment and you feel that it doesn't want to move that's because it needs to be loosened uh, the lock needs to be loosened to change this. Um, you can, many of you are strong enough to crank on this and actually break the internal gears uh, that make this travel up and down. And it's an expensive repair and it takes us a lot of time. So please, if you feel any resistance when making any adjustments, take a moment, look at how the saw is set up and figure out how to unlock it correctly before making your adjustment. When you're cutting through different thicknesses of material, it is important to change your settings for those different thicknesses. So in this case, I would loosen it, go a little bit lower, in this case, if I didn't raise it, I may get stuck or caught. I need to loosen my guide, guard, raise it up, and lock it down. On many of our bandsaws, we have lights. This one is mounted right here, it's just a simple on and off switch. Um, on the back side of the saw, we have a few more adjustments available to us. Students, don't touch this, don't touch this, don't touch this. Don't touch this, don't touch this, don't touch these. Don't touch this, don't touch this. If you wish to remove your fence, simply unlock the thumb screws, slide out the fence, unlock your bracket, and take the fence off. Um, don't just sit this on the floor or throw this on a table. Uh, make sure that you tuck it away. When I take the fence off the table, it gives me a lot more surface area to move the material around to make wide cuts. Um, one thing that you need to be aware of is that the distance between the blade and this back here is called the throat. Um, different saws have different distances between the blade and this back spine. Um, depending on the way that you draw out your piece that you're going to cut, you can actually get stuck uh, on this column as you're trying to pass the material through. So plan out your design so that you're, you're hanging that excess material, that large piece of sheet, off of this side of the saw and that you don't get caught on this column when you're trying to make a cut. If you find yourself in a situation where you get caught or stuck, pause, hold the material still, turn the saw off, touch the brake, wait for it to stop completely, uh, and then have a technician help you guide the material back onto the saw blade so that you don't damage the saw or hurt yourself. To put the fence back on the saw, slide this on, slide the fence back in the slot, and tighten up your thumb screws. So I'd like to cut this, I'd like to rip this board down and I'd like to resaw it, meaning I'm going to split it down the middle and make it a narrower, thinner board. Raise the guard and guide higher because the fence needs to fit under the guide block at the bottom. And then I'm going to lock it down. So as I'm cutting and splitting this board down its length, I'm going to be holding against the fence and guiding through with my rear hand. And when I get to this point, I'm going to uh, pause. I'm going to grab my push stick and I'm going to guide through the remainder of the cut. Uh, once I'm through the cut, 
I can either let my material fall on the ground or I can uh, catch it on the back end with my other hand. Whenever you're using the fence in this orientation, uh, it can be tempting to pull it very, very tight to make a very tight shaving off of the side of your piece of wood. Uh, please do not do that. Uh, if you def get any deflection or bending in the blade, you can put a gouge or a gash in the front face of this fence and it will be less accurate in the future. When you're done, uh, please do not leave the guard and guide uh, very high up like this because you'll notice there's a lot of twist and deflection in the blade. The next cut you make will not be as accurate and also it's dangerous because now I uh, am exposing myself to an unnecessary level of risk by having the guard and guide that high. So I'm going to unlock my lock, I'm going to crank it back down, and I'm going to set it appropriately for the material I'm going to cut. So I'm going to demonstrate using the nose end of the push stick. So when you're cutting with a bandsaw, or any woodworking tool for that matter, the saw will communicate with you and tell you how your actions are affecting its performance. So um, as I'm pushing a piece of material through the saw, I'll notice the regular rhythmic sound of the blade cutting. Um, if there's an interruption in that sound, if it starts to squeal or screech, or um, make a clicking sound or a ticking sound, any sort of uh, sound that's different indicates that I'm either uh, behaving incorrectly, using the tool the wrong way, pushing too hard, pushing the wrong direction, or uh, there's something wrong with the tool itself. So let me just show you the, the difference in sound between a couple of uh, different boards here. This is a very thin piece of plywood. This is a pretty thick piece of oak. So even though it's the same saw, it sounds different depending on what it's cutting and after having some practice and experience you will become familiar with how it should sound depending on what you're cutting. Uh, this piece of oak is much thicker and denser. I'm going much slower as I make the cut. I'm taking my time and I'm letting the blade do the work. With a thinner piece of material or if I was cutting a sheet of cardboard I could push it much much faster um, but I still need to give the saw enough time to cut through the material. All right so now I'm going to demonstrate how to do a pretty straightforward curved cut on the table saw, or on the bandsaw. I'm going to draw my cut so that you can see it. Uh, when you start on the cut, I'm going to turn my material so that I'm straight in line with the beginning of my line. So as I was making that cut and working my way through the material, I was uh, gently moving uh, the back of the material to guide it through and pushing forward gently as I went. At the very end of my cut, I was in a situation where my fingers were close to the edge of the blade. When I got to this point, I actually oriented my left hand up here and reached around toward the front and guided through uh, the last bit of the cut. Sometimes when you're cutting and you're pushing, uh, that last little bit of the blade will sort of pop uh, out of the edge of the cut, so I tend to slow down, slow way down for that last half of an inch of the cut. So let's do that same cut again, but let's make a change in the table orientation. Now we're going to come down here and change the adjustment of the table so that we can do an angled cut. These are a little tricky the first time you use them, but they're basically a wrench that is attached to a, uh, to a bolt. So if I pull down, I can set the wrench whatever, wherever I like, and I can crank uh, to loosen or tighten this. So I just need to barely loosen it. And once I've gotten it loosened, I'm going to just bump the back end of the table up, give it a little wiggle. And on the front here, I have a gauge that shows the angle, the approximate angle that I'm setting the saw at. So let's say I want to set it at a 20 degree angle. I'm going to lock down this, which holds the trunnion in place, and I'm going to go on the back side and lock this one down as well. When I change that adjustment on the table, I need to confirm that my material is going to fit correctly beneath the guard and guide. So in this circumstance, I'm going to have one side a little higher than the other. 
I'm going to raise it up just slightly so I have enough space for the material to pass through. So as you can see, you can get some pretty dynamic shapes pretty quickly, creating compound angles, compound curves on the bandsaw. When you're done cutting with the angled settings, you're going to come down here, holding on to the left-hand side of this bar. You're going to, again, loosen those locking trunnions, loosen those little levers, and supporting the table because it wants to drop, you're going to guide it down. Nice and slow and then tighten your table back up. So now you're reset again to cut in the normal 90 degree configuration. All right, so working on the bandsaw, we can make some pretty interesting interior cuts that we wouldn't be able to make with other saws. So in this case, I'm gonna demonstrate how to make a cut and remove this section of material in the middle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut in on this line and then I'm gonna back straight out going the way that I came. Then I'm going to come in and cut this line, and then back straight out the way that I came. Then I'm going to come in and turn and catch this side, removing this piece. And then I'll do the opposite, removing that last little segment. Cutting on the bandsaw, sometimes we need to make cuts where we cut to a point and then stop and then back out of the cut. You can back out of the cut with the saw moving so long as you do it exactly the opposite of how you got to that point. So I'll demonstrate. If we turn too quickly or we make the wrong turn, we can actually break the blade. So it's important that you be cautious when you do this. do cross cuts with the addition of a miter gauge. So this tool has a little wheel that slides into the slot. And now rather than using uh, this as this fence as my reference surface, I'm using this little fence. So I'm going to make sure first that I move the fence, the main fence, well out of the way of my cut. Never ever use two reference surfaces at the same time. You can get caught up in the blade, uh, your cuts will not be accurate, and you can get hurt. So we're going to use one at a time. So holding on to this, by holding the handle and holding my material against this reference surface, I can make nice straight little cuts. So it is completely um, within reason to keep cutting on this, but when I get down to the very end, you wanna make sure that you're not in a position where there's more hanging off than you have to hold on to. So make sure that um, you always have enough linear material uh, extra linear material, so when you start cutting, you still have something to hold on to at the end. This miter gauge is also really useful if I want to cut something that is rounded. So this gives me a safe reference surface to hold on to, um, so that if I were to cut this freehand and uh, it would start rolling on me, uh, that would be bad. So this is giving me a safe way to cut a rounded object. <laughs> It's very tempting when there are cutoff pieces next to the blade to reach in and grab them. Um, first, you wanna stop the blade from moving before you reach in and get those little pieces. Um, if you're doing a lot of sort of manufacturing cuts and you wanna have a push stick or a small uh, piece of wood to push it out of the way, that's totally fine. But don't reach in and grab anything that's around that blue throat plate because that is the danger zone for this particular saw. I can also make angled cuts uh, on this miter gauge. I simply loosen the handle, turn it to whatever degree I like. In this case, I'm going to do 45 degrees. Set it back in the slot. When you're done with your miter gauge, make sure that you put it away. Each shop will have its own place to store the miter gauge. And make sure that when you're done with the saw, you clean up any remnants, small bits and pieces that you've left, and sweep off the surface of the saw so it's ready for the next person.